voices only. We cry. We cry. clap and lift his name all together hallelujah hallelujah you're supposed to say amen hallelujah we're going to do things a little bit differently uh, we're going to have time of fellowship now but i'm going to give you a mission tell the friends uh, next to you god is your shelter god is your shield god is your strength Let's greet each other by saying this. And please walk around and say hello to everybody. We're going to have time of fellowship now. saying to each other, God is your shield, God is your shelter, God is your strength. God is your strength. Amen. finishing up your fellowships uh, I want I'd like to give you one more mission for this song I want everybody to get involved and clap your hands they're gonna show you at what beat we're gonna clap at so please from beginning to the end don't stop keep clapping and uh, let's lift God's name all together okay
ourselves as a sacrifice to you our life our thoughts our actions everything belongs to you everything comes from you there are times that does not happen but that gives us more reason to come front in front of you and pray for Holy Spirit's leading please shape us train us so we could be more pleasing our shapes of our lives our thoughts would be more pleasing to you more like Jesus let us keep continue our journey of loving Jesus and loving our neighbors we give this offering to you please use it to expand your kingdom and spread your gospel and then teach your disciples we give this service uh, please bless pastor park and his words may be may have your authority authority that it will shake our hearts and will challenge us to change the way of our lives way of our thinkings let us be a servant they only love God 
and loves the neighbors because that is the two rules that you gave us. We lift your name on high. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. How great is our God. Amen. Uh, just a quick intro. I'm Elder Han, serving as a chair of a building committee, and I have a quick report to give it to you. Uh, slides up? Yes, thank you. Uh, these are the few things that happened, uh, maybe behind the scene. Uh, just want to report it to you. There was a donated property of a private residence uh, that was uh, actually, uh, instead of keeping it, we decided to sold it, sell it, and it was sold early last year. And the net amount of $691,000 is in building fund. Uh, another big thing happened was the, uh, the mortgage loan, just like you, we have a mortgage for church. Uh, the seven-year term uh, expired, and we renegotiated 10-year term at a fixed rate of 4.86 for the loan amount of uh, $5.6 million. So our mortgage payment is about 37, 38,000 a month. So you can compare to your mortgage. Uh, there was uh, some uh, coming, you know, along with the, uh, the parking lot expansion, there was some, the water drain issue that we had to implement the mitigation plan. Uh, it was cost us uh, $50,000 for that. And another big decision was uh, there's another donated property. It's of a 62 acre of land in PG County in Brandywine. Uh, some of you may have been there and heard about it. Uh, uh, for f about three, four years, we weren't, uh, we visited the site many times, but one, what we weren't able to make any progress uh, with the property. So uh, with the prayer and the leadership decided uh, to hold church again with the uh, approval of a general congregation meeting in the early February that we decided to donate, re-donate it uh, to the organization called Pression, P-R-A-S-S-I-O-N. That's the acronym for Prayer is Mission. Uh, it's born out of uh, the KCPC senior pastor's vision uh, of transforming the world through prayer. So they are far ahead ready and ready to move ahead with building a uh, guest house and activity uh, center for the, uh, the mission. Uh, so, uh, we'll be working together, and again, uh, that's a big decision for our church. And we have annual building pledge coming up next week. Uh, at, along with the announcement, there's an insert uh, that pray over the week, and the, uh, the annual the building pledge that we do help uh, with the principal payment of the loan uh, and repairs and maintenance of this aging facilities. We've been here over it's now eight years uh, coming up and also used as a seed money for any kind of uh, the improvement. Uh, there's one another one uh, that will be kicking off the, uh, the feasibility study of education annex uh, uh, soon. That's again with the vision of a pastor park for the next generation. Uh, it will be uh, starting soon. So again, next, Saturday, next Sunday, March 11, uh, we'll be doing the uh, annual pledge. And thank you. Good morning. I think we have some photos and slides from last year's uh, trip. Can play that, please?
Good morning, Church of Philippi. I'm Mitchell Ha. I'm here to inform you about the next Peru short-term mission trip, uh, Peru 2018. Uh, it is happening now. The interest session. Uh, we tried to have the uh, announcement last week. We didn't. We didn't get to do that well. So we were trying to meet the, for the interest group after the service day, but we'll push it back to next week. So you guys have a week to pray about it um, and think about it. Okay, and seek the Lord for guidance. So. I don't think I was in most of the photos there, but I did go last year. Um, I'm sure you remember I'm the guy that lost the bag. He had a bag stolen. Um, I'm going back this year. Why am I going back? So that I can find the guy, and maybe he will sell it back to me, all the stuff that's in there. I'm bringing some cash to him, maybe give him a couple hundred dollars. Um, but uh, we'll see. Uh, but it's my eighth time going to a short-term mission trip, and every time is different. Every time is a blessing. Uh, needless to say, uh, last year wasn't the greatest experience for me. Uh, but I'm going back this year because I went, like, I went through the whole trip last year in my head. There's a lot of bad things. There's a lot of discouraging things. But the blessings that God provides, the fellowship that we had with the believers, the people that we served there, they were outweighing it so far that I was like, I, I must go back. I should go back. Um, on top of that, the people in the jungle are so hospitable and kind. The orphans who remember us and welcome us. Um, the pastor, the missionary there, Pablo, hit his wife, Sarah, and their four beautiful daughters, Abigail, Hannah, Gabriella, and Sella. You know, we played the song, Her Hurt and the Healer. Um, there's a lot of hurt over there. The, in the jungle, they don't have a voice. Maybe people in the city do, but they don't have much voice in their country. The orphans? Who takes care of the orphans? And James 1.7 says this, pure and undefiled religion in the sight of our God and Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. And we have this wonderful opportunity in Peru to do just that. Uh, and who should sign up? Who should sign up? If you can look after bags, you're qualified, okay? If you can look after bags, keep that in check, you're more than qualified to come. Um, you can play your guitar, you know, that's, you know, sing songs and all that, but faithful walk to Jesus Christ, but as long as you watch out for bags and stuff, stuff like that, you're good in my book, okay? Uh, but no, in all seriousness, who should go? Uh, we all know, we all say, like, we'll go next time, we'll have another opportunity, we'll think about it, I'll go next year, I'll go the year after, I'll go after I graduate, all those things, it's well and good. However, that might be arrogance in our lives as well. James 4.13 says this, Now come, you who say today or tomorrow will go to such and such city and spend a year there and engage in business and make a profit. Yet you do not know what your life will be like tomorrow. You are just a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and also do this or that. But as it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Therefore, to one who knows the right thing to do and does not do it, to him it is sin. I'm trying to guilt trip you right now. I don't know if you guys are guilt tripping. Um, no, but no, that's not the reason why you should go. Uh, we are all sinners here. Some of us sinners saved by grace. Some of us have received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Uh, going to Peru is good. Going to all the mission trips is good. Serving in the city, serving here, serving everywhere is good. But all the serving doesn't change your standing with God. Let's just keep that straight. Going to any STM or any mission for two weeks or 20 years doesn't save you. It is Jesus Christ who saves you. And because he's a great savior, if you trust it in him. We are going to Peru this year. Us going to Peru is faith, an exercise of faith. It is a response to the grace that we have already received through Jesus Christ. That's why you should go. Because you have faith. Because God himself will go with you. And I hope you will join him in this trip. Thank you. Please rise for today's scripture reading, which comes from the book of Luke, chapter 5, verse 1 through 11. 
On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Genesaret, and he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the wind, and he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing, but at your word I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats, so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, son of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. Thank you. This is the word of God. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good to see you. Those that I can see, it's a little dark over there. But um, Hey, today was a special day in that we had a new team uh, leading worship for us, uh, led by Brother Kyung Tan. Can we just have a, give it up for them? Thank you for coming and leading us. Okay, it's got a number of new members. Um, and we just want to remember James, Pastor James, as uh, he started his new ministry over there in Arizona. I uh, hope that you can continue to remember him, that he could grow in the Lord and could be used by God in a mighty way over there. And, um, and the other thing that I want to say before we start the, the word is um, for those of you that uh, came out yesterday for the all church cleaning, thank you so much for those of you who showed up. Uh, thank you for those who didn't show up too, <laughs> because you'll be joining us next time. Um, no, it was great. I, I don't know how many of you know that uh, the place where you actually put uh, some of your own sweat is a place that you get to appreciate more. And so I just noticed, uh, we heard actually, I heard that what we did yesterday was the first time uh, since we moved into this building that uh, all the church got, uh, or as, as many people as possible from the church, got together and was cleaning happily. Um, they were cleaning bathrooms. The seats you are sitting, you know, is being vacuumed. Um, and, you know, just all the dust off, uh, the walls, the things were thrown away. Uh, there were people outside. You know how windy it was. Uh, people were out there picking up trash that was uh, over there. It was, just, it was just wonderful to see people who were wiping off windows and uh, cleaning the kitchen. Um, the EC and the YM were involved in cleaning the, the pre-K. Um, and uh, so it was great to see all of you. And the, the theme was, make it shine. So, um, uh, could we just say that together? One, two, three. Okay, we could do a little bit better. I know, I, I, have, to, I have to cue you up, okay? Pump you up. One, two, three. Make it shine. All right, that was better. One more time. One, two, three. Make, make it shine. shine. Okay, yeah. Um, you know, uh, today uh, we had Elder Han actually uh, report on some of the building, and it may have... Uh, gone a little bit too fast, I don't know, but the whole idea is that uh, is that we, uh, we're we not just guests or visitors, at least that is most of us here, um, uh, that we are to, to, to take care of this building together. Um, and um, so thank you. Thank you for being part of this congregation. Um, and thank you for cleaning. Um, we're going to hopefully do that again, maybe in the summer, because we didn't get to clean the outside that much, but uh, we hope to do that. Um, today, if any of you are visitors today, welcome. Uh, welcome to this church. We hope that you can sense God's presence here. We hope that uh, even as we were led in worship, that, uh, that you sense his healing you sense that this place could be a place of refuge, 
uh, in, a, in a very tough world and that you can uh, grow to understand who Jesus is and uh, be part of this family. Um, so welcome, uh, welcome to all of you. Uh, I'm debating whether or not to introduce this person. No, okay. Could you bow with me? The word of prayer, first start. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you that wherever, whatever situation we are, you, um, you see us. You see our hearts. You see our thoughts. You care for each one of us. And... Uh, and I thank you that it is by your grace that we, uh, we believe we set a foot in this place today. And would you now open the word of God to us in such a way that we could see you through your scriptures. We could see your heart. We could see your mission. We could see what you're really like. And, uh, and be, um, be moved to follow you with a whole heart. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right, today uh, is uh, Luke chapter 5, verse 1 through 11. We've been going through the book of Luke. For those of you who are visiting, uh, we've been starting from chapter 1. Starting last fall, we've been going slowly, and we're looking at the, at the life of Jesus through the book of Luke. Uh, and the series is, is entitled, The Gospel, uh, The Good News Actually Lives and Moves. The good news is Jesus himself. And so, so far we've looked at the narratives of his birth, his, uh, before his birth, and then um, starting from several weeks ago, we started looking at when he uh, became an adult uh, at the age of uh, 30, the narrative surrounding his baptism, his temptation, his ministry, uh, it is hometown in Nazareth, in Capernaum. Um, and we were also taken to different places like the wilderness, the synagogue. Uh, we were taken to uh, Simon's house, Simon Peter's house last week. And, uh, and, and we saw some amazing things there. And, uh, and then from there he kept going and he, uh, he went on to, uh, his message is uh, summarized as preaching the, the good news of the kingdom of God. And so a little um, review. Uh, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is the reign of God. And what's the difference between the church and the kingdom of God? The church is not just a building, but the church refers to people. And people, not just, not, not all people, but people who have welcomed the Reign. The kingdom of God is the reign of God on their lives. So that's, those are things that we talked about. Um, and we just saw amazing things as Jesus went uh, to different places. I just want to remind us today, what is the mission of Jesus as, uh, as said in Luke chapter 4, verse 18 to 19. I'm going to read that for you again. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news. Good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty, freedom to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Um, it is good to uh, read again the mission statement of Jesus is to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Um, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And the way that was expressed, he did not start a political movement in the sense of starting a political party to go against what the, the Jews were felt were their main problem, which was the Roman Empire at that time. That was not uh, the way he moved about. But he did something else. He did something else that uh, people at that time did not see. Uh, what Jesus meant by set, uh, 
set at liberty those who are oppressed, he wasn't mainly referring to the Roman Empire oppressing them, although there was Roman Empire oppression. There was oppression, but the way he went about these is not going against that, but he, he went against the invisible powers that were behind that, and that was manifested through people being set free from demonic beings, unclean, uh, evil spirits. And so we said that the biblical worldview, the way Bible looks at the world, is the reality of those beings that actually oppress people. And Jesus came and said, that is the oppression that I came to set you free from. And I came to set free, not just you, but I came to set free the Romans as well. So we see that uh, the Jesus worldview and the human worldview of, uh, of going after the kingdom was quite different. So uh, today's passage, um, so last week we talked about healing. Uh, and we talked about uh, what, what goes together with that is, uh, is uh, expelling of demonic spirits from people. And we shared stories about people being healed um, and uh, people being touched uh, by God in a real way. And I shared with you some of my stories. Today's passage uh, reveals a new emphasis on Jesus' ministry. So um, what is that emphasis? What is this uh, thing that we just read today? Luke chapter 5, verse 1 through 11. What was the story? It was a story of Jesus calling uh, a very familiar person that we know, if you've been to church for any length of time. His name is Simon. Uh, Simon also called Peter, right? So it's a, it, is a, it is a story of, uh, of Jesus calling um, Peter to, uh, to follow him. And it is a unique story in the sense that it's not found in any of the other Gospels. As you know, many of the stories in their Gospels are repeated. Uh, it's why we call synoptic Gospels. But this story here is quite unique to Luke. And uh, so every time we are reading scriptures, um, we, we, we go with the question, Lord, what is this revealing about your mission, what does this reveal about you, uh, about what you're really about? And so, um, and so we see that this is the first time this, this calling of the disciples it mentions in Luke. It's a, it, it's a new topic in the book of Luke. It's not a new topic for us, but it's a new topic here in the book of Luke. And as you know, it, uh, what does that mean? It means that Luke, right at the outset uh, with this story, is emphasizing the priority of Jesus in calling people to become his disciples or his followers. It's a story of a special encounter Summer Peter had with Jesus. It turned out to be the decisive moment for him to leave everything to follow Jesus. Uh, just a small note, though, um, as, we were, as we will be looking at this, is that the way Jesus calls people uh, is not all the same uh, because we're different. We're different. We are with different background. And so what we want to try to do is we want to uh, glean some insights with an understanding that uh, the way he would call you and me also can be very different. You can have similar elements. I want you to keep that in mind. Um, a very... Uh, uh, example that came to me was that the way Jesus called Isaiah into ministry was very different from the way Jesus called Jeremiah into ministry. Uh, Isaiah was from a uh, uh, Jerusalem. Uh, he had a high position in a very um, uh, um, well, a high position uh, with um, with status, uh, and in that place, the way uh, God appeared to him uh, was different than the way God appeared to Jeremiah, who was from the suburbs. Uh, he didn't feel like he was anybody. And so God encouraged Jeremiah. Uh, Isaiah had to be humbled uh, quite a bit. And so um, 
It depends on uh, where we are. God will use different methods. But let's look at uh, how um, God called Peter uh, to ministry. I want to start at the end of our passage today, which is, <clears throat> it says, and when they, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. They left everything to follow him. Uh, now, does it mean uh, today, as you are as you're about to uh, delve into this, is it all about leaving? And I want to say, uh, again, in this case, yes, leaving everything. And you remember, Abraham was called to stay or to leave. He was called to leave. He was called to leave everything he knew. He was called to leave his family, uh, his country, and to go to a place that what God will show him. So there is definitely, a, uh, when uh, God calls, when Jesus calls, there's a definite sense of leaving. But now, I see in another scripture, it was a very different kind of a command. Um, let me introduce you to 1 Corinthians 7, uh, 17 to 24. And I'm just going to read one verse to you. And there it says, just verse 24, So brothers, in whatever condition each was called, let him remain with God. Let him remain with God. That whole chapter is about remaining where God called and being faithful and to follow him. Uh, and so for some of us, physically, it could mean to leave. Others, it, could, it would mean to, to stay exactly where you are. Uh, but there is one transfer that we need to remember, whether it's a physical leaving or staying. Colossians 1, 13 through 14 says, he has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. So what, uh, what Jesus is really looking for is a transferring from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, the kingdom of his beloved son. So for Peter, it meant leaving everything and following him. And that's uh, to express his leaving of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. The thing that I want to ask the question is, how did then Simon come to surrender everything and follow Jesus? We want to look at the process. The first one, the first thing that I see here is that, um, that it was not the first time that Peter met Jesus. Uh, he actually... Uh, it seems to me from the scriptures, he has met Jesus a number of times. Uh, he was, uh, remember last week, uh, he was in the, he was in the, uh, he was in, uh, Jesus was in Simon's house, and, uh, and Simon saw some incredible things happen there. He saw uh, really demonic beings leaving and people, incurable diseases, all of them coming uh, and being healed. He saw that, uh, but he didn't, it seems that he, he went back to his, uh, his normal vocation, which was fishing. And that's where we pick up on verse 1 here. Uh, the scene is, we went from the, uh, the wilderness to the synagogue to Simon's house, and now we go to uh, right beside the lakeside. Uh, and so there's, a, there's, there's all these different places, which goes to show that following Jesus means it's not just following Jesus into a church building, but it is following Jesus in every uh, sphere of our lives. And so uh, here we see in verse 1, Jesus is walking by this place and people are crowding and it says that they were pressing in to hear the word of God. So he was standing. Um, and so he was sharing. But uh, as you know, like if you stand right beside the beach, it's, uh, it's hard to let your voice be heard except for the people right in front of you. And so what he did was he, um, he saw the, uh, the, the place as a possible amphitheater if he went out on the boat and he sat on the boat and he spoke out and the, the voice carried to the people. And so uh, he did that. But I think that what was really happening was that 
uh, if we see, if we read in John chapter 5, it says that he, uh, he always does what he sees the Father doing. So I, uh, I, uh, I think what was happening was that Jesus was um, communicating with the Father and Father uh, showed those boats uh, and uh, the owners of those boats were uh, Simon and his friends. And so he thought of that as an opportunity to, uh, to, to press in, just like they were pressing in. Jesus was pressing into more of what was on his mind. But the key thing, uh, is before we go into the pressing in, is to see that um, there was this, uh, this phase of considering, looking, observing, but not actually committing. Uh, and I think this, happen, this happens to most, if not all of us. Uh, let me ask you. Uh, when did you commit yourself to Jesus? Do you remember that? Uh, what process did you go? Uh, maybe you grew up in church, but... Uh, some of you, even though you grew up in church, the, that itself didn't mean that you actually committed yourself to Jesus. You just kind of was in, in the environment, and so you just followed everybody. Uh, but it's a very important thing to go from the crowd and just following to actually committing to Jesus. Now, actually, we... Uh, uh, we've been visiting uh, people every week, right? Tuesday and Thursday night we've been visiting, and uh, we got to meet a couple uh, last Tuesday. And uh, so that was the question that we asked, is that how, you know, how, how did you uh, come to um, a personal relationship with Jesus? And they ended up sharing. It was a, it was a wonderful sharing. Both of them did not come from a, uh, did not come from a church background. And the way... God led them. It was amazing. Um, uh, we found out uh, after they shared, uh, we were blessed, but we found out later they were blessed sharing it, partly because they kind of forgot what was the, what was the, uh, what was the phases that they went through in terms of actually coming to Jesus. And by actually sharing that, they got to remember the grace uh, that was poured out on them. And so I hope that today, also as, you, as we read this, that you, uh, if you have committed yourself to Jesus, that you remember, how, how did that happen? Or it could be that uh, you've grown up in church and you are still in the observation stage. Observation stage. You are kind of seeing, trying to see if this thing with Jesus is, um, uh, is the real thing that you want to commit yourself to. Uh, and I, I think one of the biggest hindrances, though, that I've heard many people uh, from committing themselves to Jesus is, uh, unfortunately, it's the church. It's the church who said, uh, we're going to follow Jesus, and because it doesn't seem to be consistent with what Jesus is saying, and therefore it could be a real hindrance. Today, I, I, want, to, uh, I want to remind us that really Jesus... Jesus is looking for, not for crowds, but Jesus is looking for disciples. Jesus is looking for people who will actually follow him from the crowd. And so this passage is given to us. And as he presses in, uh, we notice from this passage three things, at least, that uh, Peter had to confront. Uh, or at least that was a stage through which he had to go through, in, uh, after which he actually uh, surrendered himself to Jesus. So, what's the first one? The first one I see here is he got into the, Jesus gets into the boat, uh, but right before that, we see that the fishermen were washing their nets. Uh, fishermen for washing their nets uh, and we find out later that actually they were fishing all night and uh, they didn't catch anything and so what does that mean uh, he he worked really hard he toiled 
but he came up empty. He came up empty. Yeah, he caught nothing. Um, and I believe this is a this is a example of showing uh, that he came to confront his limitedness. Limitedness. Uh, he came to confront that he couldn't do everything. Uh, in his place, in the territory where he was supposed to be the expert. Uh, how many of you know that actually it is a gift to experience limitedness? It is a, it, it's a grace to, um, to really recognize that we can't we can't do everything. But my, some of you might say, well, no, actually, I, I, I do know that. Um, but I think that we know it in, in, uh, in part, but we're not, we're not really confronted with it. I think the biggest confrontation yeah, comes actually at death. Uh, how many of you have been to funerals? And it is a, it's the funerals in which you, uh, if, especially if it's a person that you've known, and you, that's the, that's the end. And uh, people share that going to funerals uh, is, um, is an experience of thinking about one's end, like, uh, like you do in no other situation. Actually, there's a person... Uh, there's a SRB that uh, have you kind of pseudo experience it and they bury you. And so they, they, they get a coffin and they, they put you in there and then um, <clears throat> and they go in there, it's completely dark and they, they start to put dirt on top. And then they get to share about their experience. Let me ask you a question. What what was the experience that uh, caused you to be confronted with your limitedness? It's a very important part. Peter experienced that. Peter experienced that in this passage. Uh, that was the first, con first thing that we need to be confronted with. And in that place of confrontation, where he was able to come up with nothing, uh, Jesus still... Ask something of us, and that was he asked for the boat. He asked for the boat. It is ironic that at a place where you feel like you've completely failed, you actually do have something. And so Jesus says, Can I use your boat? Can I use your boat? And so Peter uh, allows his boat to be used. And Jesus goes on the boat and he teaches on the boat. And at the, after the end of teaching, he doesn't stop. He doesn't stop and he, go, he presses in further because his ultimate purpose was not just to teach to the crowd, but his purpose was actually at the heart of Peter. So Jesus, after he finishes, he tells Simon to do something. Tells him to go into the deep and let down the, the nets for a catch. Catch. Now, Jesus didn't say how big a catch it was going to be, but it, uh, he just said, just let down the net on the deep uh, and uh, you'll get a catch. And, uh, and what, can you imagine what Peter's, uh, was Peter full of faith when he heard that? Yes. I know great things is going to happen when he heard that. No, he didn't. Um, he, he probably, he went with a lot of doubt. It's, it's like this is in the, in, in the daytime and, you know, fish don't come out and so with a lot of doubt. How many of you know, uh, though, if, even if you do have doubt as you're obeying the Lord, it's important that you follow. Okay, I, I, I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen but I'll, I'll put my step forward. 
Today you had a challenge to go to the Peru mission team. And some of you may be asking that question. You know, what would really happen if I stepped out like that? And uh, today's story is, um, is an encouragement, is an encouragement that even if we do have that, that when you hear that inner voice and you follow, uh, amazing things will follow. Peter had to be confronted with the words of Jesus. And, uh, and I, I want to remind us that discipleship really begins with responding to the words of Jesus. Jesus says, I mean, the Peter says, at your word, at your word. So important to, uh, to have that word to be a witness in the inner being. That's the only thing that we need to do, is to do at his word. Uh, a lot of times we feel like there are so many competing responsibilities and callings and uh, and that causes incredible amount of anxiety and uh, and the and the burden in the heart and I love Jesus uh, where he says my yoke is easy my burden is light uh, so how is that possible that what Jesus is asking is actually easy. What he's asking is actually light. And that's because all we need to do is hear that one word rather than 10,000 words uh, that come with, uh, with competing for attention. The only thing we have to do is to look at that one word. Hope you're encouraged by that. Not 10,000 words, not 10 words, not 10 different voices, one voice. Follow that. And Jesus says that is easy and it is light. Okay, what happened afterwards? What happened afterwards that there is, uh, he says, okay, well, I'm not sure what's gonna happen. I'm just gonna go and do it. Uh, and then he puts the net out and, um, strange things to happen. The, the, it seems like it's getting heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier. It gets so heavy, he has to call his friends and he has to, he has to bring them. Uh, and when he sees that, something happens to his heart that didn't, uh, that, uh, that didn't occur previously, even though he saw a lot of miracles. This miracle was different for Peter. And I think that for many of us, uh, probably you've seen, seen, you've seen God at work, uh, but you, you still kind of go, uh, just go through life as if nothing, nothing really big has happened. And then there is this one thing, or it could be this one song in a worship, or it could be this, uh, you know, there could be this, this long message, but you don't hear this long message at all, but it's just this one phrase uh, that grabs hold of you. I want to say, if there is one phrase that God is uh, uh, using to speak to you, uh, I give you freedom. I give you freedom. You don't have to listen to anything else. Just listen to that one phrase and have that as a takeaway. Like this whole thing here, it could be, there, there are many things said, but there's that one phrase. And for Peter, it was this miracle. He saw something happen, and it caused him to confront something inside of him that he was never able to really acknowledge before. What was his uh, statement? What was his uh, action in verse 8? When Simon Peter saw it, this, he did something he never did before. He fell down at Jesus' knees. 
Now, he saw other miracles, but it was that one where he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. So what was he confronted with? He was confronted like never before. His own sinfulness is what I see. Do you remember the time when you confronted your own sinfulness? Uh, you know, it's not an easy thing, actually, to confront your own sinfulness. Is it? Is it, um, is it, is it easy to see the ugliness uh, inside the heart? Is it, is it easy to see the lust and the greed and the envy and the pride and the despising and the hatred and the blaming? Is it easy? No, it's not easy. Uh, it is not easy. Uh, and it is something that we desperately want to flee from. And the way we do that is by looking at the problems out there. Um, and we judge what's out there. Uh, but something in this miracle caused him to confront his interior world. And he recognized for the first time, oh my God goodness I am broken I am broken but the wonderful thing about this and the gospel is is that when our brokenness is shown it comes with his grace the easiest place to recognize our faults is with a person that will show you grace isn't it It's very quiet today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there is... When you sense safety, you can actually deal with the brokenness inside. But when there is judgment, on the other hand, you want to do anything but to, uh, to acknowledge the brokenness, right? So here, Peter saw two things at the same time. He saw his own brokenness, and at the same time, he saw in Jesus a person who accepted him. So can you, I mean, note the, the irony of him saying, depart from me, and then he goes to Jesus and falls. He doesn't want Jesus to depart. He, he believes that Jesus is going to embrace him. And so... <laughs> He, he falls down and he says that. And uh, Jesus doesn't respond by saying, I forgive you. But he expresses his forgiveness by giving him an assignment. The assignment is, from now on, you will be catching men. And so, uh, how many of you know that actually when somebody gives you an assignment, that person is trusting you, right? Um, <clears throat> when you give assignment to your children, you are actually trusting them, right? Uh, Jesus is saying, I want you to be part, uh, not just a, a spectator out there, but I want you to be part of following me. Do not be afraid. So here's the a, here's a final word. Uh, do not be afraid of following Jesus. He really is a safe place. Peter, he, you know, it, took a, it, took a, it took a little while. Uh, and here's another thing uh, about that. Do not see the church as a hindrance, but I would not just encourage you to look at Jesus. Not the church, not the brokenness in the church, but just look at Jesus and respond to him. Uh, that is, I believe, what Jesus' heart is for you. Uh, Today, do not be afraid. Follow me. You will be catching men. You will be catching. You will actually be changing lives. What does it mean to change lives? To set them free from what oppresses them. So Peter was confronted with his limitedness. I don't know if you've ever been. He was confronted with Jesus' words. And then finally he was confronted with his own sinfulness at the same time, 
the grace of God. And so what was his response? He left everything to follow Jesus. Would you do that today? Would you close your eyes with me and pray and uh, give the surrender to Jesus? Let's bow our heads. And to just say, into your hands, I commit again with all I am for you, Lord. You hold my world in the palm of your hand, and I am yours forever. I want to ask you, Lord, to... to help each person here to see you as refuge. See you as the one who heals brokenness. See you as one that is worth it all to leave everything else behind. Do it in a mighty way, Lord. And now we pray as, as we sing this song, uh, receive our prayers uh, at whatever level of faith we have receive this as our prayer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, would you ride with me and uh, make this faith statement to say, Jesus, I believe in you. confession would follow us all through our lives. 
Jesus, at your word, we will let down the net. At your word, we will go. At your word, we will stay. At your word, we will love. At your word, we will pray. At your word, we will go and say hello. We, at your word, uh, we will stop something. Your word is so precious because it comes from you, Jesus, the living one who rose from the dead. Now, Lord, as we go that with that confession, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us this day till we see you face to face. All God's people said, Amen. God bless you.